Statistics and Excel, Poisson distribution formula and graph. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with statistics and Excel. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're on the icon, left-hand side, OneNote presentation, 1520, Poisson distribution formula and graph. We've also been uploading transcripts to OneNote, so if you go to the View tab, Immersive Reader tool could change the language if you so choose, being able to then read or listen to the transcript in multiple different languages using the timestamp to tie in to the video presentation. OneNote desktop version here in prior presentations, we've been thinking about how to describe different data sets using both mathematical descriptions, such as the average or mean, quartiles, and the median, and pictorial representations of data, like the box and whiskers and the histogram. The histogram is what we usually visualize when thinking about the spread of data, which we can further describe by saying the histogram is skewed to the right or skewed to the left, for example. Now we're thinking about families of curves that might be useful to represent different data sets. And if we can represent a data set with a curve that has a mathematical equation related to it, that would be great because it might give us more predictive power about whatever that data set is related to. So last time we looked at the easiest kind of uh, curve or family of curves, the uniform distribution. Now we want to look at a little bit more complex one, this being the Poisson distribution. So it's not that complex. It's not going to, it's not like it's poison and we're not poison, poisoning you here. It's a Poisson distribution, the emphasis on uh, the second bit there. So similar kind of concept here though, if we look at the data and we see that it's characteristic of a Poisson distribution, if we can get the formula, even though it's more complex of a formula, then again, that formula can give us predictive power. Now, oftentimes in a business setting, the Poisson distribution is related to like line weighting situations, which can come up uh, quite often in different kind of business uh, settings. So it could also be something that could be distributed over space as well. Uh, we might look at an example like that in the future, such as how many uh, potholes are in so many miles of, of road might be an occurrence that happens to follow a Poisson distribution. And if we recognize that, then again, it might make us a, a little bit easier decision making. So let's first think about the conditions that would be present in order for a Poisson distribution to happen. So when we're thinking about the examples, we're thinking about real life examples that might have a distribution of occurrences similar to a Poisson distribution, in which case we can simulate those occurrences with the function and the curve. So an event can occur any number of times uh, during a time period. So if we think about our classic line weighting type of situation, we're trying to think about how many people might arrive in a certain interval of time. That's what we're usually thinking about. Now, obviously you would think practically there's an upper limit to it, but theoretically an infinite amount of people could arrive at any time interval in a line weighting type of situation. So events occur independently. So we're not talking about events that are gonna be dependent upon each other. Uh, they're going to be independent type of events. So the first event doesn't affect the second event. So for example, if you're talking about a card game and you were to pull one card out of the deck then and then pull a second card out of the deck, the second card odds would be dependent on the first card that was pulled out of the deck in some way, right? Because now there's 51 cards in the deck. But if you put the first card back in the deck, now you have two and you shuffle it, right? Now you have two events of pulling the second card which are kind of independent. So the, the, we're talking here about a Poisson distribution where the events that are happening in a line waiting situation, people coming into the line are independent. So the rate of occurrence is constant. That is the rate does not change based on time. So we're not gonna have a rate change on the time. So if we're thinking about a line waiting situation, we might be thinking about that situation during a certain interval of time, such as rush hour, where like the rate is constant during a certain interval of time, uh, or, or if it was a restaurant like lunch hour, or if it's a roller coaster like in the morning or something when it's most busy or something like that, the probability of an event occurring is proportional to the length of time period. 
So that's what we're looking at here. We're trying to think about time frames and how how many times an event is going to happen within a time frame, which we'll get into in more depth in a bit here. Here's the formula for it. Now, note this is a kind of a, a, a complicated looking formula, but you don't want to be too intimidated by the formula because uh, in Excel, what we want to do is basically use the functions in Excel. And what we really want to be able to understand is when would a Poisson distribution be applicable and how to use the function in Excel. And the idea would be similar to what we had with the uniform distribution, which is that even though the formula is complex, if I can, if I know what the formula is, I can plug the numbers in and get an approximation based on the curve that will be representative of the actual data uh, in, in real life. Now, to actually draw the formula, remember that you can always go into the insert tab and you can go into uh, the equations up top and then you can go into your ink equation and you can draw the formula out here. And so, and so I think this is the easiest way to do it if you want to kind of represent a formula go boom I'll just do this quickly because we've seen this in the past and then this equals lambda is kind of hard to do lambda <laughs> see it's got it see I got it it picked up lambda with that crazy mess lambda any case I won't draw the whole thing out but you can you can plot it out this way as we've seen uh in a uh, prior presentation and we do do that in the excel presentation if you want to check that out uh, as well, but you, you can use that any Microsoft product will basically have a have that similar kind of a feature to actually draw out a formula. So why is this here? I don't know what this is doing here. All right, other other things. Uh, e notice if I look at this formula, we've got we've got then the lambda to x times e to the negative lambda over x uh, factorial. So let's take a look at some of those components of the formula just so we can get an idea of what's included in it. Now, E is a constant. It's kind of similar to pi. So it's got that number that goes on forever. It's around 2.71828 and so on. So, so that's going to be part of the formula. A factorial, what that means if, if I had, for example, 5 factorial, that would be like uh, 5 times four, you know, times three, uh, times two. So if I put up the, the calculator, what this would look like is five times four is 20, 20 uh, times three is 60, three times two is the 120, and that's the factorial. So that's what the exclamation uh, is, is representing in the formula. And then we have the e in excel how can we get to that e well you could type in that that but it's approximation so if you can get much closer to what e actually is since since it goes on forever with the equals exp uh and then put a one here and that'll give you this number so we can use that if we were to use the equation although we won't be using it much because we're going to focus on the excel function which will do this for us and then the factorial if you wanted to do a formula, a function in Excel for the factorial, it would be equals F-A-C-T. So if I put in uh, equals F-A-C-T-5, it would give us the 120. So we have those. So if I wanted to type this into Excel in just a formula without using the function, we could do so using the factorial for the, for the exclamation and the uh, EXP. Uh, for E. Okay, so other items. Note that uh, the mean, when we think about the mean in prior presentations, uh, we, we saw the mean often represented as a mu or sometimes an X bar. Here, it's often represented with uh, a, a lambda. So when we're talking about a Poisson distribution, you might see a mu, uh, but you'll often see the lambda. Now, remember that when you're typing these in, uh, it can be kind of hard to, to find them sometimes. So if you're trying to represent this, you could put a U, uh, but it's hard to find a lambda. But if to get a mu or a lambda, you're going to go into the symbols up top. And then notice these are in my, my favorite symbols because I've been using them. If they're not up there for you, you can go to more symbols 
and then you want to go to the, to the Greek and Coptic. And I usually put this side to just uh, plain normal text. But I think it'll work there as well. Uh, anyways, we're going to go, we're on uh, Greek and Coptic, and then you can find uh, your lambda as it should look like this and this. Once you find them, they'll be in the recently found areas and you can add them fairly easily. So uh, the variance, uh, the variance uh, is, is sigma squared that we've seen in prior presentations. You could find the sigma there in the same Greek area and then the squared is a subscript that we talked about in a prior presentation if you need to do that for the poisson uh the mean and the variance are equal so so that's one of the characteristics uh, of a poisson type distribution so for example if you were to generate your data and you did your calculations of the variance and it was somewhat equal to the mean of your data that's one indication that hey this might be 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 following a Poisson distribution, in which case I might be able to approximate the data with a formula, which has a function in Excel, which might give me predictive power about, you know, the, what's going to happen in the future. All right, so let me, let's give it, let's get some example of some data here to get an idea of what's going on. If I want to use uh, this Poisson function in Excel, then we just need that mean or, or the lambda, mu or lambda, so we're going to say here it's five and then the rows when i type in the rows in excel i'm going to put 70 uh rows so then our data if i if i plot this out i'm going to say we have x on uh the left and then we've got uh x of p which is going to be our function on the right which is going to be our poisson dot dist uh function so so we're just plotting it at this point in time. We'll take a look at more specific examples in the future. But again, usually oftentimes you're looking at a line weighting situation, which would be some, would look something like this. If it was a line weighting situation, you might say whatever the time interval is, let's say it's a minute or something like that. We're saying what's the likelihood that four people will arrive within that time interval? So in this case, we have 17.55% likelihood that four people arrive within the time interval of a minute. What's the likelihood that five people arrive within the time interval of a minute? And then you can answer questions such as, what's the likelihood that somewhere from one, from zero up to six people arrive within the time interval of a minute? And that would be the sum of all of these 10.44 plus 14.62 plus 17.55 that's that's kind of the idea of the outcomes that we'll get but right now let's just graph it so up top here notice i have the sequence formula up top so we'll do this in excel the sequence formula when you actually just put the x's i'm going to put x's from zero on down to 70. i could use that by just formula copying the formula bar down or, or the autofill down. But you can also use the sequence formula. And that's useful because if I put a sequence formula in this cell saying that I would like to have the number of rows be 70 plus one, because I want to start not at number one, but at zero. And then I'm going to say comma, comma, start at number zero, start at number zero. Then I can change this cell and it will change my spill array over here, which is great. Now, the, the arrays have pros and cons to them. We'll talk more about that in Excel, but that's a useful formula to know because it, it allow you to increase or decrease the number based on uh, a data input formula. And then the Poisson distribution for each of these cells is going to be equal to Poisson.dist. The X that we're picking up is going to, in the first case, will be zero, then one, and so on. If you did a spill array, you can pick all of them up and let it spill out as we are doing here, comma, and then the mean, which is represented by lambda here, is going to be five, and then comma, do we want it to be cumulative or not? Now, this argument uh, has to do with, am I trying to add up everything up to a certain point, as we said with... Uh, what's the likelihood between of one or zero to six people coming uh 
or do we want just the likelihood of one individual spot, like the likelihood of just zero, one, two, and so on. Here, we're just gonna put likelihood of each individual spot. So we're gonna put a zero to represent that, which I believe would be false as well. You, we'll go into that more in Excel if you want. And then if you wanna look at that presentation, and then that gives us our data set. You can see that it, that it tapers off towards the bottom. Now, remember when we looked at our requirements that in theory, it could go on forever, right? Because because it's you could have an infinite number of people come in in theory, but in practicality, it's going to generally taper off, uh, and and as we as we go. So if I want to uh, approximate this, there's actually a tool within Excel which will give us a random number generator, which will which will play with, will practice with in Excel, which will give me a random number generation based on the 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 mean the mean number here so in other words similar to what we did with a dice ruling where we said i would like to get a random number generation between one and six for every thousand rolls of the die you could say i would like a random number generation from excel but i would like it to be such that it follows a poisson type distribution meaning the data has a certain mean and and the data you know follows these conditions these conditions happen to be met which often could happen in real life right if these conditions are met and you know the mean then you would think the data is going to give you a, a poisson distribution so there's an element of randomness here from these numbers that were generated from uh, excel but they're representing also a randomness of a finite number of numbers instead of like the infinite number of numbers that we think about like in theory so 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 then I, so this would be kind of like as if i went with a stopwatch to my line waiting situation and actually counted how many people show up for example in whatever in in whatever interval i'm talking about right i went there and counted that 15 people showed up and then 10 people showed up in the next time interval, three people showed up in the next time interval and so on and so forth. So we might first actually pick up this data to look at it to see if it actually does approximate a, a Poisson distribution. So we're imagining we actually gathered this data uh, from our line weighting. Now we're gonna do our bins. We're gonna count them and say, how many of these numbers are zero, one, two? How many of these numbers represent zero people showing up in the time interval? One person, two people, three people, and so on. And then this is a frequency distribution. In order to get that, the frequency distribution formula in Excel is equals frequency brackets, the data array, which is all of these numbers, the actual data, comma and then the bins which are all of these numbers now note that you might say i don't why am i using a frequency i could use a count if formula meaning i could say count if you find in this data this number one zero one two but with this random number generator the count if sometimes doesn't pick it up because i think maybe some of these random numbers aren't exactly whole numbers sometimes so you might try to make these numbers whole numbers. You could round them to be whole numbers. But I find that this frequency distribution picks up the proper numbers quite well. And you can tell because if you sum up all the numbers down here, it should sum up to 1,000. Now, remember that I only went up to 30. Like you, you, It could be possible that one of these numbers are more than 30 people showed up, if that's the example we're looking at, because, it, because the upper limit is infinite. But it's unlikely that that's going to happen, given the, it's, given, given the characteristics of the Poisson distribution. So it's in theory possible, but it's likely that you're going to... So there's no really upper limit, but in theory, there's going to be basically an upper limit for the most part, right? So then we can look at the relative frequency. The relative frequency is any of these numbers divided by the total. So for this number 12, it's 12 divided by 1,000. And that's going to be 1.2%. This is 14 divided by 1,000, and that's 1.4. By the way, this 1,000 down below is a check figure because I generated 1,000 numbers. I didn't, I didn't paste them all here, so you don't see the end of it, but I generated 1,000 numbers in Excel, and so they all showed up, I can tell, in our boxes, in our groups, in our bins, 
because it adds up to a thousand. Now this is the difference between the relative fr frequency we got in our example and the the Poisson distribution. So here in the Poisson for one, I got 3.37 uh, for two, 8.42. And here for one, I got 0.1 and 0.1. And then for three, I got, I, I got 1.2. And over here for three, I got 14.04. Uh, and and then 3.3 for five and 17.55 over here and so on. Now, I don't think these are exactly tying out because I actually changed, I changed this one to, uh, to the lambda of five and when it's because I was, I was changing the data sets over here, whereas over here, I've got the data that was generated with a lambda of 10. So this difference column isn't, <laughs> isn't really helping us out right now. But if I changed in Excel, I'll change this to 10. Uh, and, then, and then I'll change the rows to match as well. And then when we look at this difference column, it should be a closer uh, difference column. But in any case, if I was to plot these, these two on the same graph, and again, they don't look the same at this point because I used a different uh, midpoint, but you could see the 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 two distributions. One one of them uh, is is generated from the data that we observed, and when we look at the data that is observed, you can still say, well, that might follow a Poisson distribution. It looks kind of like it's following a Poisson distribution. It's got that characteristic uh, look to it, meaning it's a little bit skewed to the right. Uh, but it's but close to bell you know bell shape uh, depends. We'll talk more about the 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 shape of the curve as you change as you change uh, these numbers in our Excel presentations. But it's got somewhat of a bell shape, but it's always going to be slightly uh, skewed to the right. And so we see that, and we can also, as we'll see in future presentations, look at some other characteristics such as is the data we're looking at following these criteria and then we can also see whether or not with the data set the the mean is equal to the variance or similar or close to and if that's the case then we're going to say okay maybe a poisson distribution uh is relevant and then we can actually uh, do our poisson distribution which will give us predictions predictive power into the future more so than taking past data right if so in other words if I looked at this data and I said, I don't think this data conforms to any line, whether that be a uniform distribution or a Poisson or any other distribution we'll look at in the future. If that's the case, then it's going to be difficult for us to make predictive power into the future because we're going to have to use more complex modeling to do that. But if it does, many things do conform to some of these families of curves. And if it does, then that equation is going to be easier for us to make predictive power in the future. Now in Excel, we'll also graph these two things together so you can see how to put these two items on uh, the graph together, the, the one we did with the Poisson and the one we did with the actual data. And again, the, the Poisson would be fairly close to the actual data uh, if we change the, the, the Poisson data here to be 10. Uh, and, and the number of rows to be equivalent, which was like 30, I think, or but at least and then we would then we would come up with these two that would be somewhat on top of each other, which again would be another pretty clear indication that the data set would be approximate in a Poisson distribution. And then we can possibly use that to make predictive power if it was a line weighting situation, possibly, you know, about how many people we need at certain time periods and so on and so forth.